everybody, Tim here with today's episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 6, Episode 23, Rightful Heir. So this is, I, this is a good episode. I think I like this episode. I do, I do. I really like this episode. So sometimes I'm not really into the Klingon episodes, or sometimes I love the Klingon episodes, especially for like the the first few seasons of The Next Generation. I think they were great, because Klingons didn't get a lot of development in the original series, and they were kind of all over the place. But then, like, the later episodes, I'm not too into the Klingon episodes, mostly because it becomes very political, and I'm just not a political kind of guy. And technically, this is a very political episode, but I like this one. I think it was well done. So this episode is... So Worf is having a difficult time with his, his rituals and his culture and his heritage. Ever since the two-parter, Birthright, where he went to the planet where the Romulans and the Klingons were together, and he had to tell the youngins the stories about his people and Kalos and stuff like that, he's just hasn't felt right since then. And so he's trying to, like, channel his inner self. And the time of this episode is just crazy, because most episodes kind of take place within a couple of days. And so he starts missing shifts and he's late for work and stuff like that. And Picard's like, you know what? You need to go figure you out and then come back. So he puts him on a 12-day journey by shuttle to this planet where other Klingons are waiting for the return of Kalos. And then he, we see it cuts to him being there and he's all upset. And he's like, I've been here for 10 days and there's no vision Okay, so already this episode's gone over the course of 22 days. So, like I said, I don't know what the what the Enterprise is doing during this time, but okay. So, he's he's having a difficult time, and supposedly other people here are having visions. Well, anyways, Kales ends up showing up. Like, the real, real Kales ends up showing up. And he's trying to, like, preach the good word all about this. So it turns out over a thousand years ago, Kales disappeared, and they tell this the story. He went to a volcano and took out some hair and stirred some water and whatever, saying that, and he pointed to a random star, and he's like, that's where I'm going to be. I'll be there someday. And this is a planet near that star, and now they're just waiting for him. And he shows up, which I'm going to stop right there before I get too far ahead of myself. This is the second time that we've actually seen Kales. If you go back to the original series, the second to last episode, The Savage Curtain, Kalos was one of the main characters for that episode. And there's always been some, like, dispute. Well, if that Kalos had a smooth forehead, why did this Kalos have a, a rigid forehead? Well, I mean, with Enterprise and Discovery and other stuff like that, we know that far back Klingons did have the rigid uh, foreheads. So technically, this would be the real Kalos. And the Kalos in the Savage Curtain was a, a not a hologram, but it was a copy. It was a projected version. So I guess theoretically that villain monster from the Savage Curtain could have just taken a random Klingon, thought they all looked like that, and made its own Kalos. People think way too more too much into this, but whatever. Some I know some of you watching this is gonna point that out, so I gotta do it first. So We've seen Kalos now in this episode, and he shows up, and nobody knows what to do because it's the second coming of Kalos. And it's interesting because Picard now has to kind of be that devil's advocate middleman where he has Kalos, and now Chancellor Gowron wants to come, and because he doesn't want Kalos to overthrow him, has to come and be like, nope, my throne, go away, and prove that it's not Kalos. So they do DNA testing and all sorts of other stuff, and this the second Kales is passing all of these tests, and now nobody knows what to do. Well, it turns out that this Kales was a clone, and that's why he has some of the memories, but there was a little bit of damage in there because it's been thousands of years, and so now they don't really know what to do. And in the end, Gowron does end up kneeling to this Kales because of an I because it, he does represent the idea even if it's not the real Kalos he represents a Kalos and he represents those good intentions so like I said it's a really interesting episode and this is super super crazy allegorical for like contemporary religious beliefs because we have all sorts of DNA stuff and can you imagine if somebody was like hey we found DNA of Jesus and we cloned him like oh my god like I don't even want to think about how the world would react. It would be insane. So this episode deals with a lot of really deep issues that personally I still don't think society is ready to get into. 
I mean, we can barely clone a sheep. So overall, I think it's a good episode. I think it was a step in the right direction to kind of point out those issues of like second coming and if like predicting stuff like that is true or not. It, it brings up some interesting questions. Uh, for those who have seen this one, I'll, I'll bring it up for debate. What do you guys think about Kalis from the Savage Curtain and Kalis from this? What do you guys think about the second coming of Kalis? And do you think it's metaphorical for how we view religion today? Go ahead, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for everything, and I will see you next time for Second Chances.